Welcome to Shadows of Dawn. <laughs> Welcome, my players. Trying a little something new. This is Meeting in Avangard. On the day of the meeting, you are escorted up to, uh, or welcomed as you make your way to Avangard Castle. Uh, you identify yourselves at the front gates and are then escorted to the castle proper. As you come through the courtyard, you notice you're walking alongside members of the other adventuring parties. The Dragon Slayers of Bellspar, the Saren Defenders, and the Fellhammer Five, you're all here. Uh, you're held for just a moment before escorted into the main castle, but eventually you are. As you cross the courtyard, you notice the castle itself has suffered damage. Collapsed walls, some broken areas, some of the glass. Um, you can't tell much about it except for the fact there looked to be maybe burn marks, maybe fire was involved or some kind of heat. Um, but you make your way through the main doors of Avangard Castle and as you're used to, into the main audience chamber. Uh, as you come through the audience chamber, you immediately notice that the main audience chamber is set up for some kind of meeting. You immediately start to recognize some of the people at this meeting. Uh, you recognize, obviously, uh, the High Lady, uh, Raven Avangard, uh, the High Priestess, Gabrielle Solarum, and Sergeant Elias Talbrook. Uh, but you also notice the council. The full council is there. Annabella Tos Tolsoy, Sergeant Boren Crenshaw, Trudor Falconhand, and Master Timothy Margone. Looking around the room, you are nodded at by Lawgiver Angelina Coronovus, Lawgiver John Solaris, and you also see Lawgiver Wesley Morales very present. A few more names are present at this grand table, which has a name, and you are escorted to a chair. Um, chair uh, the Sheriff, Captain Arian McCary, Warrant Officer Dorian Firebrand, who represents the Bounty Hunters Guild. Pathfinder Calypsis, who represents the Hunter's Guild, and Explorer Callista Firestar, who represents Adventurers Anonymous. Uh, you can tell the meeting is about to begin. There's a motion for order, and everybody takes their seat. Lady Avangard begins to speak. I would first like to say my sincerest condolences to House Tremblewind. I know that this must be a difficult time, and what we are about to ask will be even more difficult, but I do think it may prove useful to your current situation as well. Thank you. Thank you all for being here on such short notice. I'll get right to the point. Lord Shard Avangard is dead, as is Selenia Delinar. They along with many of the Red Knights, battled what we now know as the Aspect of Tiamat. And they killed her. But she came back to life through some sort of chromatic rebirth ability with mythic powers which seemed to take hold after this event. So killing her actually made her stronger, and that, unfortunately, proved far too much for even the mighty Shard and Selenia. Bringing them back is not a possibility. I ask you to accept that now so that your thoughts do not deviate from what we are saying to you. Many Red Knights also gave their life in Avangard's defense trying to defeat this foul creature, but her goal seemed to mainly be the killing of Shard and Selenia as she teleported away as soon as that was completed. Master Timothy Margone and Sergeant Elias Talbrook were witnesses to this battle in its final stages and can attest to the powerful nature of the aspect. A murmuring falls over the crowd as they kind of you know, lean side and side. What's, what's, what's this? What's an aspect? It's been the High Priestess Gabrielle Solarum then speaks. An aspect is not a deity power, but rather a prime material manifestation of that power. It's very powerful, but it is not a god, so it can be killed. Lady Avangard, thanks to the Fellhammer Five and their recent mission, we've managed to connect the dots from clues they discovered, as well as clues from the recent attack. 
it appears as if our dubious Marquis Calvin Del Mar has been working together, along with the Hand, a rogue guild from the south, and a recently revealed dragon cult, for quite some time. Their plan for valley domination seems to have been pushed into a fallback phase. In fact, the Marquis Del Mar may have succeeded now where his ties to the fiends and the cult of the Black Earth failed, but we don't know for sure. High Priestess Gabrielle Salerum. Yes, the five dragons being unleashed from the crystals was both a prophecy and opportunity. It seems as though the cult of the dragon and Marquis Del Mar were connected previously somehow. We aren't certain. But we now suspect he either employed the Hand, or was connected to the Hand by another entity. Regardless of how they got together, their goal was to rule the Seren Valley alongside the dragons. Obviously, that plan failed, thanks to you all. Sergeant Elias Talbrook raises a hand. Yes, the Hand seems to be brought in to provide muscle and stealth from what we can discern thus far. They've been navigating through the merchant's guilds, and of course played a big part in the food shortages in November. Their tie is undeniable, as they possess two of the uh, three items of control, which Master Margon will describe. Timothy Margon. The aspect of Tiamat is most likely able to be summoned at a place called the Plateau of Sorrow. Due to the five deaths of the five adult dragons. It was not possible before this. One of the five dragons from one of the five points of the chromatic spectrum seemed to be the key. Take no despair in this, as their goal was the same, total conquest of the Saren Valley, and you all managed to stop that. Lady Avangard chimes in. And for that, my friends, we are eternally grateful. Timothy Margon continues. But back to the items of control. There are three, as discovered by the Fellhammer Five from the recent infiltration in Tindleton. The Scepter of Discord, the Orb of Bound Legends, and the Orb of Calling. Of all three, the Scepter of Discord is the most dangerous. This, according to legend, gives the wielder absolute control over the aspect of Tiamat. As long as it exists, that beast, chaotic and random by nature, can be wielded with precision, like a weapon. The Orb of Bound Legends is another control mechanism. The Orb was apparently created during the summoning of the Aspect, and holds the keys to the Aspect's legendary and mythic powers. Sergeant Elias, Elias uh, Talbrook chimes in. Meaning, as long as the Orb of Bound Legends exists, the Aspect has legendary and mythic powers, the likes of which you have never seen. Destroying it would remove those powers. It seems this was another way to control the Aspect of Tiamat, in case the Scepter failed or was taken. Huh. At least the bad guys did something right. Timothy Margon continues. Indeed, the third is the Orb of Calling. From what we can tell, this grants the Aspect the ability to teleport, which is not described in any lore or legend we could find. Again, along with the Scepter, this makes the Aspect a most dangerous weapon, one which allows the Aspect to teleport from one place to another instantly at the Controller's whim. Lady Sir Raven Avangard lets that settle for just a moment, but she rises. Are there any questions thus far? And with that, my friends, we are going to go to RP Online. And I want you to go to the RP Online and where this video is posted, feel free to ask your questions and we will continue, perhaps with another video once all your questions have been asked and collected. Thank you for joining me with this. This has been Shadows of Dawn. I just wanted to do that one more time. Thanks, guys.